well um i don't have to introduce myself do i no <laughs> so um what we are going to do next i think i should start by what happened between the last time we met frequently and now and what that has to do with all of us we always talk about um, our health uh, we throw it in from time to time in the lectures we gave but I want to encourage all of us that in addition to building wealth we should build wealth that we can spend that we can share and that we can you know use to leave legacy and the only way you do it is for us to be mindful of our health habit well you don't have to go and check into any university to learn it but it is something you should consciously learn here is the truth the moment your health is challenged every other thing stands still every other thing stands still and um, I see that there are schools where you go and learn medicine and stuff like that. I think there should be another school where people go to learn how to stay healthy. We have it where? Okay. And it should be popularized. There are so many things that we do that you don't know the impact the implication so that's something i want to leave with you on this occasion be conscious of your health habits know what is good for you to take and what you shouldn't take that's very very important um another thing and i don't know how many people really know this if you are an atapata dide you know i always talk about atapata dide if you are an atapata dide you are part of the rock uh, uh, you know apata is rock solid you are part of it but you are trying to separate yourself from that rock you know to rise it's a challenge and that is when for some people and i happen to be one of them when you don't have the the resources to go to the level you are aiming at then the yoruba um fejeron or what do they call it <laughs> because, because you don't have the startup capital so you throw in yourself and whatever and that of course has its own impact but it has to be done because you have a choice if you don't rise from that rock you just stay there but balance is what i'm you know talking about let's learn to balance things up rest when you should and they say eat balanced food me, I will always ask people who, who give that advice. Tell me what food is balanced for me. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and which is within my budget. 
Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, so <laughs> so when you talk about it balanced food, I always ask myself now what makes it balanced? Okay, that being said, um we should move to the next thing um which I'm sure those uh, watching us would like to hear. Changing, we have so many of such people coming to SADC. There is something I've discovered, of course, among other things, but this is one challenging thing uh, for most of the people who come to SADC, and that is how to graduate for the from the university of hard knocks because if you ever wake up one morning and you want to become an entrepreneur that's the university you will enroll in immediately and you find that so many you know i want to be millionaire i want to be successful people they just stay in that university for years so my question is can you share with us you know how did you do it i mean each one of us have our experience so let's share it so that you know our mentees and those who want to God to lift them to where God has, you know, brought you will learn from your experience. So I will start with uh, Saudat again. Thank you, sir. In 2001, I wanted to start my business. I um, am a programmer and um, I used to build websites. And I wanted to settle down. And I found out that um, a lot of women, married women most especially, that, uh, that have careers, they're not able to balance it, their career and their marriage and their married life. Because about 85% of domestic decisions are made by women. Our culture, whether it's in Nigeria or abroad, women influence the home. And when we are pushing women to, to have a career, to go into politics, to run a business and all that. We forget that she still has to fulfill that responsibility at home. It doesn't matter if she's MD or ED. So I asked myself, I wanted to get married at the time I was thinking about marriage and I was also thinking about my business. And I just thought, okay, what were the things that, that um, hold the woman back from pursuing her career? And how can I use technology to, to block some of that gap? so that the, a working woman can also be a career woman, like a working man can be, can also, is also a married man and his marriage doesn't disturb his career. So I decided to build a website. But then I built a website to, to, to help her shop. That was one part of domestic responsibility I thought I could fulfill. A woman does a number of things at home. But I asked myself, what part of it can I take on online? So my, my website was what came to mind. But you see, the thing is, I knew that it was more than a website. It wasn't a web, just a website, and it wasn't just going to be an app. Or there was no application then. It was just websites. It had to be a business. And because my parents were not, for me, starting my own business, that means I had to re, re, be a rebel at the time. So I needed to be part of something that would make sure I do not fail. Failure was not an option. And then again, I also needed that kind of mindset, a success mindset. I, I could, everybody around me was like, how can you leave your job and start something? What, what, what nonsense? What are you doing? You want to build a website for people to shop. 
you know, and it was, it was crazy at the time. So, but I didn't want to hear that. I just wanted positive thoughts in my head. And I went to the um, newsstand. I saw Success Digest. And I was just swallowing everything. I, was, I mean, I just needed to psych myself that this thing had to work. And that's one of the things I tell my, my, um, my, my mentees. But when you want to do something, especially when you are is novel at the time, when God sends you, gives you an idea, he has given it to you. So many people might not understand it, but he didn't give it to many people. He gave it to you. So what you need to do is you don't need everything to start. When, when, when Noah was going to build the ark, he didn't have everything. When, Moses was, when God sent Moses on, on, on an errand, he, he, he had many no's. Pharaoh sent him back many times, but he had to go back. So you have to fill yourself with, with thoughts. Good, uh, you have to read. I mean, I became, I, I bought so many books, of course, because of Success Digest. I bought books. I had to read. I had to psych myself. Then there was this book, How to Make It in Nigeria. Because all the books I had were Think and Grow Rich, um, Richest Man in Babylon. All those things were just about, okay, abroad. I needed something like Nigeria here, 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 here. I mean, what's going to make me succeed here so i saw that book how to make it in nigeria i read that book i digested the book so that was one of the things that fortified me you know so when you want to start a business and when you want to do something you actually need to fill yourself with those things those uh, words and people you have to be around people that have a success mindset that that thing is just too critical the people you are working with every day the, the books you are reading, then even the research about what you're doing. I knew that a website, what, because the business I wanted to do is online shopping. And online shopping abroad, the person that did the companies that I was looking up to, they set up their own business with 10 million pounds. I didn't have 1,000 pounds. Not talk of 10 million pounds. So I needed to do things in the Nigerian way. And um, a, few, a few months ago, um, I had the idea because the number of people have started what I've started. But over the years, you know, this is a lot of people coming into the space and a lot of people going out of the space. Online grocery delivery is not easy. It is definitely not easy. We don't have the structures, infrastructure. Then we don't have the culture. Because this is just our online shopping is about culture. It's a culture and a, 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 a certain mindset. So it's not just okay because I'm buying books. Because like I said, food is a cultural thing for us. And when a woman outsources that kind of thing, she feels as if she's inadequate. You will still find a number of people thinking that because they sent somebody to the market, it means that they are lazy. No, you've been at your desk all day. You've been working all day. You are tired. You, you can outsource that. It is okay to outsource that. But we still tell ourselves, ah, I'm too lazy. Oh, that's why I use Easy Shop Easy Cook. No. You use Easy Shop Easy Cook because you already have that outsourcing mindset. The same way you call a carpenter when you want to fix your house. The same way you use a driver so that you can have time at the back to read during transit. All right? So it takes a while for things like that to happen. So now we're doing, I'm, I'm training people. Because a lot of people have started, they started doing this thing and they, they do, all the problems I went through, I see them go through it and they come to me. So now I'm doing a training program that is, uh, one is starting um, in September and we're working with a number of partners to help all the support system I've garnered over the years so that I can show them how to do this. Because it's, norm, it's not websites, it is not app, it is a problem we're solving. So I need to put it in their mind that this business you are doing, yes, you are selling tomato, pepe, and so, but there's a particular problem we're solving. We're keeping working women in the workplace. We're helping them to solve work-life balance solutions. We're helping, we're partnering with organizations because it is high time organizations to also partner in work life, helping their staff to reach work-life balance. It's about diver diversity and inclusion. So people are coming in here thinking that, oh, I can sell Pepe online. No, that is not what you're doing. That's why you keep entering and coming out. You need to know the problem you're solving with your solution. So that when problems, so that when you have challenges in your business, that will be your driving force to keep you in the business. So that's why I'm doing this training program to help a number of people that want to do this. They want to do this as a business and they want to do it properly. So I'm not, I'm not, I didn't call it online um, e-commerce web. No, it's personal home shopping business. 
which they can migrate into whatever online thing they want to. But they need to understand the problem they're solving. They need to understand the customers they're serving. They need to under understand even the sector that they're in, not just e-commerce. You're selling food online. You're, you're looking at agriculture. You're looking at logistics. There's so many things. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do for my mentees now and anybody that wants to come into my space with, with the years and all, all the things I have I've garnered over the years to help them. Thank you. Good afternoon again. Okay. Um, you know, <laughs> Once you jump into the online space, it's very, very easy to get distracted. And particularly, um, the era of information, the way information flies these days and overload is very, very inevitable. And if you don't sit down to plan and structure what you do, you find out at the end of the day, you come in confused and leave more confused and frustrated. Okay, sometime last year we, uh, we were looking at breaking into the blockchain um, terrain. And I remember doing a seminar here at SADC. But along the line, I figured out that people were coming in for the wrong reason. People want to show me how to, in fact, all the lists I built for that, everybody wants to or uh, how to make money quick put money make money put money make money and like this is not what blockchain is about if you want to make money with bitcoin or invest in it it's a different game altogether you can create your own coin or you can do anything but blockchain is blockchain is 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 is, is, is a structure on its own so uh, when i figured that out i had to suspend subpedal on that and let me be in the background i was just discussing with mr Toy earlier on and he was like how far are you still doing trading i said well the way i do it now is in the background a trade i put up since june i just closed it like two days ago because that one that is not what it's all about but now so i at some point i had to like sit down having worked with children for years i'm like let me go back i had to gather children and what we do now this talk of knowledge, trading knowledge. I'm like, let me experiment with these children. The richest man in Babylon, when I read it many, many years ago, I didn't really understand it. Just like she was saying, we read these abroad books and all that. I remember years ago when I was trying to give advice to somebody based on richest man in Babylon and I said, leave those things. It's, it works only abroad. It doesn't work here. But I had to mandate the children, all of you have to go get the richest man in Babylon, get rich that poor dad. Things are, because I had to reread the book. And rereading it, I'm like, I wish I had this understanding I have now, many years ago, and which is what I want to experiment and build it into the children. And one key thing that is missing when it comes to this pursuit for any business, somebody, uh, people uh, particularly these days, jumping into, it's all about make money, make money. But studying the richest man in Babylon and with these children now, it really makes me understand this is not about how much money you're making. The other two aspects are being left out. How are you keeping it and what's the plan for growing it? Which is actually where the main thing is because many have made it if you check through the records you see the cash flow has been amazing but nothing to talk about right now why because the major backbone is missing out and so which is why all that i'm doing right now is all about the children now is about you getting the skill after you've got the skill building it block by block brick by brick laying it up and then as the money is coming in, you now begin to structure how do you grow it to multiply it. So come to what we are doing now. What's working, what's not working? What are the challenges that has come there? The challenge that has come there is in the, in the, in the past few years, things that are, we have done. When we go with the shiny object syndrome, we found ourselves 
we hit the rock and then we go back again and start all over. And so at this point in time, what we have decided we do, we, lo we floated um, Agroflight Limited and it's supposed to strictly deal with farmers. And we also found out that we attracted the wrong people too because of the method we pushed it. People coming in for free, looking for free th stuff. And it was almost getting frustrating again. So I did, I, we had to now sit down. Let's review the whole of these things. And in the, uh, after review, we found out you can't make money with people who are seeking free things. If you want to help free people who, are, people who don't have it, go make it from those who have it. So we had to separate that from what we're doing. So at this point in time, going with the our projects we now have to look for those who are really really in need of what we're bringing in like um the last time we we pushed out a kind of um apple products from the from from kenya and people are like well i could work in nigeria and we like let's try it out so we had to bring in quite a number of seedlings from from kenya and tested it out in some farms quite a number died bringing like 120 surviving is quite alarming but then later on i f found out that there were things we were really not getting right with it so which was the ki the kind of um s system we're using we pushed it to uh Bomb and getting to our getting to that place the water the way the the what the rains were coming there wasn't really what was uh, it wasn't really what the plants can su uh, survive with so we had to now get back and finally found out that yeah what works for somebody that is in Ogun state and for someone that uh, cannot work for someone that is in acquire bomb state so we ha we had to change the methodology and so right now we have some who are doing well with it now in acquire bomb and some who are doing okay well with it in some parts of the west here so if excuse me please if we are if we have to deal with every customer according to the one standard we'll find out that we'll be getting it all wrong so we had to cut down on the way we promote it so i had to structure a different promotion which is where what i said i had to set up by the side which is the uh, aspect of video marketing comes coming in so we have to start creating videos on all of these and start pushing it and eventually getting the right people who now understand that this is not this is the perennial product and it's something that you have to take time to build it's not something you will jump in and in three months you want to start getting returns so that thing was a big lesson that we have to now start building back inside so meaning if you are in here whether it's online whether it's offline of course any business at all you are doing online going online is just a, a case of you knowing that this thing is working offline now i need to bring it online to reach out to more people and which is basically what we have been doing so at the end of the day anybody who who is coming whatever the model you are choosing key things are uh, here patience and then time to study and understand the system and when you understand the system then implementation as you are implementing testing and testing and testing again because there's no matter what anybody preaches at the end of the day is when you implement it when you do it that you find out what works for you and what doesn't work for you so we that's the the the, the approach that it has come down to so whatever it is anybody coming in whatever it is you may be struggling whatever it is you may think that it doesn't work oh they say it works and i've done this done that it's not working just know it what has worked for mr uche what has worked for mr samson what has worked for others the way it has worked for them may not work for you that same way you have to find your own uh, enclave you have to find your own um dom domain and then conquer it if you take it hook line and sinker that ah 
I read it in a book. I saw it in a video. I attended that course, and this is the way they say you will go. You will go. You need a, and you just rush in like that. Frustration is what is going to be the order for you. So my candid advice, as um, based on what you have experienced so far, is as your whatever it is, take your time, sit down, draw up your plan, set your goals, and then where you need to take another class because. After taking the first class, lay the foundation. As you start, you now know that you need more lessons, more classes. So attend those classes. As soon as you get to each milestone, you need to go back to take those classes. And if you don't take them, the price you pay may be in the pain and the losses that will follow. So that is the little I could say for now. Thank you very much.